Good morning. Um, I'm Lorena Council Member Lorena Gonzalez, the chair of the Justin Committee. I'm joined this morning by Council Members Burgess, Juarez, and Bagshaw. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, we have, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dive in, and because we have a tight agenda today with uh, a lot of important items, I'm going to dispense with my chair's report and move to public comment momentarily. Uh, before I open up public comment, there are a few people in the audience that I'd like to recognize. Uh, as we all know, on February 21st, 2016, there was an officer involved shooting in North Seattle that took the life of Mr. Shea Taylor. Uh, I will say more about this later in the context of introducing agenda item number one. But first, I'd like to acknowledge that, uh, that Mr. Taylor's surviving family members and friends are in the audience with us today. Uh, thank you for being here with us. Second, I'd like to acknowledge that the members of the Community Police Commission, including its Executive Director, Fe Lopez, and Co-Chairs Lisa Dugard and Reverend Harriet Walden are also in the audience today. Thank you also for joining us today to uh, listen in. My name is James Bible. I'm an attorney does, that does legal redress work for the NAACP for the states of Alaska, Oregon, and Washington. Uh, I prepared to come here and just sit in a listen, listening capacity, but what I've heard today, the dichotomy between the two topics that are discussed has really compelled me to the speak. On one level, we have uh, a business industry talking about leisure time and what people for, do for fun, and on another level, we have a family that is contemplating what it's like to walk down the street and what you should do in the event that your children are stopped, and if something does happen to your child as a result of uh, some form of police action, what sort of investigation, what sort of faith can we have in a system of accountability? And at this stage, Native American community, African American community, Latino community, and those that are traditionally disenfranchised are in a place where we have little faith in what we currently have because it lacks the independence necessary from the very beginning. We don't have a system where we have independent investigators that show up and investigate homicide scenes where officers are actually the shooters, and that's critical. In Seattle, it's even worse. They don't even have the Washington State Crime Lab come and investigate. They have their own crime lab come and investigate, and from the beginning, they control the entire process, and then at a certain stage, there's something called an inquest hearing, and at the inquest hearing, the prosecutor will tell you that they're neutral, that they're fair, that that's exactly uh, what they seek to do is find the truth, but ultimately, on a lot of levels, what it does is it insulates it insulates officers, it insulates the institutions themselves from any clear objective reflection and accountability. Because the truth has already been dictated by the police reports that the police officers write about themselves. And it's hard to be truly reflective in relation to what it is that you're actually doing wrong. And that's why there needs to be outside independence. And that's why let Seattle be the first city in the state of Washington to have a truly independent system that truly has independent evaluation of police officers, which we don't have. And then perhaps that will go around the state to places like Pasco, to places like Yakima, to places like Tacoma. But let us be the first. Let's lead that way. Let's be in a place where our population actually feels as though they're represented. At this stage, at Garfield High School, the mayor of this city actually walked in and talked to our children at the Black Student Union, but has refused to come and talk to the community and has refused to allow his chief to come and talk to the community. How can we trust when parents are being circumvented, when the community is being circumvented, and when it's being dictated to our children what really happened by somebody who wasn't there, who already claimed before he had seen a video, that it was most likely a righteous shooting. These are the concerns that ultimately we all should share. And as council members, as council members, I expect you all to lead the way. Thank you, James. Andre Taylor. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, my name is Andre Taylor. I'm the older brother of Shea Andre Taylor. I'm here uh, representing my family in the Not This Time movement. This is the first time I've been in this type of proceeding. I'm not sure exactly what to expect. I'm not sure uh, what type of 
power or uh, oversight that this particular uh, meeting has over what we're concerned about, which is some justice for my brother. Um, we don't believe that everybody is our enemy, as first of all. You know, we know that there are good people trying to do great things, but we do believe that there are some people within, uh, uh, we believe that there's some situations in, police, in policing in itself that, that there needs to be some accountability for some of the things that are going on here and across the nation. And I would hope that, our hopes are that something is resolved, something has changed, and we are courageous enough as a city. I'm born here to do something different here. Uh, that's what my hopes are, that's what the family's hopes are. Um, I'm happy to see the Native American community here. I love them. <laughs> and they have uh, the same type of issue with what they're, what they're experiencing from Jack and some of their other people that have also been harmed. And I just believe, I have to believe that in this process somewhat, that's why I'm here. You know, and I've tried to be at every particular kind of meeting in Seattle that's possible because I do believe that there's something that can be done. And I believe that some, there's some good people here in Seattle, Washington that um, want justice also for all people and maybe for my brother also. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Joyce Dorsey. Um, I'm here on support of uh, Shea Andre Taylor. I'm the mother of Shea Andre Taylor. That's my son and family over there. And we just here to get justice. Just to get justice, not for only for him, but for the other ones that's coming behind, that the police don't do this to somebody else. So I would hate for anybody else to go through this. I also thank the natives for coming out and supporting us as well. And I thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm Colin Taylor. Um, thank you for hearing, uh, hearing me out. But um, I want to speak on how to keep the community safe. Um, uh, it's hard for us to feel safe in the community when we don't trust the police in, in the community. So it'll be hard for us to feel safe with the police that we don't trust. But I know there are some good officers out there. And it's, it's just we don't feel safe as a community as people, because we know there's also some bad officers. I was in a uh, Walmart like a week ago, and I seen uh, this uh, girl, she, had a, she was carrying a pistol on her waist. And I asked her a question, I said, do you feel safe walking by officer with that? She stopped and think about it, thought about it, and um, she said, that's a good question. I do, but not really safe, but I feel like I'm safe. And she, um, she was uh, a Caucasian woman, and and she asked me if I feel safe, and I said I wouldn't feel safe, even though I know how I have a right to carry a weapon in, in America, it's a right. But I still wouldn't feel safe walking by a police officer like that. So in a community, we feel like if we can't be, if we can't feel, if we don't, <clears throat> excuse me, that's my first time speaking oh, like this. That's but, okay, um, you're doing great. Um, yeah, if, it's hard to, for a police to keep the community safe if we don't trust and feel safe with them. So... That's all I wanted to say, and thank you for hearing me out. Thank you. Hello, <clears throat> and good morning. My name is Jay Westwin Wolf, and first off, I'd like to say I'm honored by the Taylor family for their um, acknowledgement of the Native American people. Um, and it just goes to show you that if you stand up and stand with people, you get noticed. And uh, I do stand behind the Taylor family. I know that John T. Williams did not get justice. The inquest um, did not resolve the issue uh, and, and left an officer free to, to quit and go be an officer somewhere else. So I hope that we, um, as this community, the Seattle community, as we work with um, the monitoring team, that we create laws that uh, help the system be better for the people. Thank you.